Have you put off using digital stamp sets because you don't know how to get them from the digital file onto your paper? Today I'm going to share how you can use Pages, which is a word processing software program from Macintosh, in order to print out your digital stamps to color them and use them in your cards, scrapbooking, paper crafting, and mixed media projects. I just recently released my very first digital stamp set. Here you can see it here. This digital stamp set is meant to go along with my Daniel Smith watercolor swatch book series. If you saw my last series, so many of you requested a digital stamp or a stamp set to go along with that. Let's move this over to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my files. These are the files that are included in the digital stamp set. With the exception of these, these are just mock-ups here. And I'll go ahead and open pages. So as I said, Pages is basically the Microsoft Word in the Mac world. I'm going to start off by creating a new document. You can either click that here or go up to File New. And I'm just going to choose a blank document and I'm actually going to choose Landscape. And I'll show you why. So here we have our document. Let me resize this so it's a little bigger. And what I want to do, this is an eight and a half by 11 document here. So you can see it's US letter. And I'm going to set up two card panels here. I'm going to drag mine over. Another way you can bring in your image is to go to media and then choose, go to your folder and then choose your image and go ahead and hit insert. So that's going to insert that document. I also want to see the ruler, so I'm going to go up here to view and I'm going to say show ruler. Now the reason I want to see the ruler is because my printer does not print all the way to the edge of the page. So I want to bring these in a little bit and make sure that my printer isn't going to cut off any of those images. About half an inch should be plenty. Um, I know that my particular printer doesn't print about three-eighths of an inch on the right and about three-sixteenths of an inch on the left. I don't know why it's different, but it just is. Okay, so we could certainly print these off just as they are. However, in the video that I have, or I, I made these two cards and colored them with Copic colors. When I Copic color, I don't necessarily want to create a full background with my Copic markers. So what I'll often do is drag in a digital paper. Um, this one is from Creative Market. I'll be sure to link it down below in case you guys are interested in grabbing this one. Um, but you can really use any kind of digital paper or you can even just kind of draw a rectangle and put a solid color behind it. Okay, so you can see that this didn't go behind my card panel here. And I wanna put that behind. The reason that that is, is because we're not really working in a graphics program here. We're working in a word processor. So this image is um, kind of set up to move along with the text. So I'm going to click on format here. I have my image selected. I'll click on format and arrange. And we can see that the text wrap is set to automatic. I want to change that to none. That's going to drop this down in front of those images and I can actually move it wherever I want now. So what I need to do, I still have it selected, is I need to move it backward. So I'm going to click backward here. And then obviously this is too large. I don't want to print this whole area. It's just going to waste my printer toner and there's no need for that. Plus I don't want it to encroach on this other card over here. So I'll go ahead and select this. I'm gonna change the height to five and a half inches because a regular card panel is four and a quarter by five and a half. But we can see that this image is square. So I need to crop this image. If I were to just drag this in and change this to four and a quarter, it's gonna skew the image and make it look a little wonky. So I'm gonna double click on the image here I can see that the crop tool is selected. 
and I'm just going to drag this in to four and a quarter and this is going to trim down that image. Now if you didn't want to drag it, you could also enter four and a quarter over here and we can see that it's going to trim off this much here. I'm going to click done. Now I want to make sure that this is lined up with my image and you can see in pages it snaps to the other image so that we know it's perfectly aligned. So I'm going to drag in another background over here. And I want to do the same thing with this one. I want to make sure that there's no text wrap. I'm going to go ahead and send it to the back. And then I need to crop this one as well. I'll go ahead and change this to, so I'll resize it first. So I'll do five and a half inches again. And that's kind of a funny little edge right there. So I think I'll crop this side. So I'll double click on it. And then I have my crop tool selected. And I'll just bring that into four and a quarter and hit done. And I can see that that's snapped into place. Okay, now it's time for some sentiment. So to talk about these, so these are the PDF files that I dragged in here. And a PDF file, as I mentioned earlier, is a vector file. So if I increase the size of this to like super huge, you can see that these lines are still really smooth. You don't see any pixels. It's, you're not gonna get a jaggedy edge if you have to either make the file size smaller or larger to fit your project. So I'm just gonna do Control Z to go backwards. Now what I'll do is bring in one of the sentiments in the ping file instead of the PDF. So again, I have all of these files in both PDF and ping images. So I'll bring in this ping image and I wanna show you the difference. So let's make this super huge. Do you see how the edges start to get funny and you start to see the squares of the pixels? That's because this isn't a vector image, it's a raster image. It's made up of those small pixels. So we'll go ahead and put this back down to its normal size or actually even smaller than that. And you'll see that you'll get nice crisp edges because it's not blown up. And that looks beautiful. I'll even make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so then there's a couple things that you can do with your sentiments in terms of the style that you can put on these. So if you select your sentiment and we go up here, we're still on format and we go to style, we can add a border around the sentiment. You can make that border smaller. You can change the color of the border. They also have a picture frame option which is kind of cool. Let me click off of it so you can see. It creates this kind of curved shadow underneath there. I do like the white border around that. I think that looks really nice and I like how it still has the digital paper background there. So that's kind of a cool look, but I'm gonna leave mine. Let me click back on that so I can get back to it. I'm gonna leave mine with no border. You can also add a shadow. Oftentimes though, I feel like a shadow on a scripty sentiment like this can sometimes make it less readable. You can bring the offset down and the blur down so that it's not as fuzzy. See how it gets kind of fuzzy? So I'm gonna leave the drop shadow off. One thing that's cool though, is that you can add a drop shadow to this image as well. So let's bring up the blur a little bit. We'll offset it just a touch more. Now, when I colored this image, you can also change the angle here. So you can play around with all of these settings. Now, when I colored this image with my Copic images, I actually came in at the very end of it and used a pencil and a tortillon to create the drop shadow around the image. But you can do that in your digital program before you even print it out and to completely skip that step. It's totally up to you. You can also change this to a different color. If you want a different color shadow, you can go with a kind of like a dark green there. I'll go ahead and keep mine black. So let's add a drop shadow to this one as well. So you can see the difference there. No shadow with the drop shadow. I think that's a super cool look. 
Now this one is really busy. We can't just drag this sentiment over here and it be readable. We need to do something a little bit different. So if I were creating this card out of physical stamps, I would probably put my sentiment stamp on a die cut or maybe a sentiment strip or something like that. You can definitely do that after you've printed the card or you can go ahead and add one now. So for this, I'll go ahead and make this white. I'll bring this circle up here. I'm gonna make it smaller. Um, you can hold down the shift key so that it stays a circle and it doesn't get skewed out of proportion. We'll go ahead and kind of line this up with that image. Let's add a shadow to this. And then what I'm gonna do is drag over one of these sentiments. Again, it's super big. I made these at a really high resolution, which is why they're so big, so that they would be good quality when you printed them out. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so now I wanna align these. So I'm gonna, I have the sentiment selected. I'll go ahead and also select that circle. Um, let's go back to format and arrange. And under align, I'm gonna choose center and then middle. And you can see that it shifted up so that it's in the middle of that circle. So that's one sentiment, one way you could do it. You could also create your own sentiment. Maybe you want a sentiment strip. So I'm gonna drag this square in here. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a quarter of an inch tall. So this is gonna be a cinnamon strip. And again, you could do this with cardstock and an emboss stamped, but I wanted to show you how you could do it in here as well. So we'll make this. Okay. So let's do all caps, you're amazing. So we're gonna do thank you, you're amazing. I wanna change this to white text so that we'll be able to see it on top of our sentiment strip here. Now I do need to make this smaller because I wanna make this a little bit smaller that's a little long. And then maybe I wanna center these also. So we'll go to center and we'll go to middle. And there we have it. So you could leave it with two sentiments. You could just choose one of them, but you have some options. Let's give this a drop shadow too to keep everything consistent. That looks a little big. Let's make that a touch smaller. And there we go. So you have two card layouts here. Now you can see that the shadow goes over the edge, but I'm gonna cut this on my trimmer right at the edge of this card, so that shadow will be cut off, so no big deal there. Um, and then that's why I wanted the two tops of the cards aligned exactly so that I can do my first cut straight across the top, and then what I would do is just cut this in half. Now. You might think that this is wasted cardstock or wasted watercolor paper down here at the bottom, but what I like to do is color the image while it still has this extra paper. And this is where I swatch my color. So I'll kind of play around with the color palette that I'm gonna use down here. I'll mix watercolors to make sure that I like the color that I've mixed. And I'll do that on the bottom of the page so that there's no waste to the paper that I have here. So now it's time to print. You can go to File Print or use Command Print. And there's a few settings that you need to be aware of when you're printing. Here's the printer that I use. It's a color laser printer and I love it. It's great for both watercolor and for Copic coloring. Um, I don't have to wait. Right after it's done printing, I can start Copic coloring and watercoloring. It is just a great workhorse. And really for the most part, these will print exactly like this. I've gone ahead and printed this already because I literally have had to record this video so many times, you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but at the end of this video, I'll show you some clips of what this looked like when it printed out on my printer. Um, 
So a few things to be aware of, this print page backgrounds, go ahead and uncheck that if you have that option on yours and see what happens. You can see it took away our circle, it took away our rectangle, and it takes away the shadow. So we definitely wanna keep that checked. So I'll do that again so you can see it because we want those things to print. We're gonna do a couple different things in this drop down menu. Media and quality. So this is really important, you guys. The feed of where your paper is coming from is super important. So if you have the option for manual feed and a tray feed, a tray feed is going to be, you know, where you put the huge stack of papers in there, right? That's where you put your ream of letter sized paper and your printer is just going to automatically pull that paper anytime you press print. What happens with that paper is normally it goes from the front of the printer, the printer pulls it into the machine, it prints it, the paper does a U-turn and gets spooled around a drum and then it comes back out the front. Now imagine doing that with 80 pound, 110 pound or watercolor paper, super thick watercolor paper, you guys. That is really hard on your printer. You might even get a printer jam. Um, it causes a lot of wear and tear on your printer. So, and it also curls the paper quite a bit. So you can have a lot of trouble if you just have an automatic feed on your printer. If you're in the market for a new printer and you are a crafter or artist that is gonna be printing on thicker cardstock, I highly recommend you find one with a manual feed. So my manual feed, only takes one page at a time. So I open up the front, I put in one page, it kind of pulls it in just slightly. It will print on the paper and then shoot it straight out the back of the printer. So it goes in a straight line. There's no spooling or U-turning. It just goes straight from front to back, right through. Manual feed, super important. Your media type is also really important. So you don't want your printer just think like, oh yeah, I'm printing on plain paper. You wanna change the weight of the paper. So you wanna look into your documentation and see which one is the heaviest weight paper. I'm actually not sure for mine, is it the heavyweight paper or is it the thicker paper? Which one is thicker? I don't know, that's not very clear. <laughs> I probably should look that up, but you wanna look that up and choose the thickest paper. For the layout, there isn't really anything to change here. Um, most people don't have a border set. You wanna make sure that's off. We don't need to print double-sided. We wanna make sure that it's printing in color, not black and white. And so there's not really anything to change there. Paper handling, you want to make sure that it is going to print at 100%. So you don't want this option checked scale to fit paper because then your printer is going to change the size of your images and we know that these are already sized to be four and a quarter by five and a half. Actually maybe I didn't show you that. I'll go back and show you that after we're done with all these settings. Um, so make sure that it's printing at a hundred percent and that this isn't checked. That is all for these and like I said I'm not going to print this because I've already printed a copy of it but let me just I want to select this stamp image here and go back to arrange so here you can see it's four and a quarter by five and a half that's exactly an A2 size card these images when you pull them in or insert them or important import them they should automatically be at the right size okay so that is how you can use the A2 card layouts. Um, hopefully that wasn't too quick. You can always go back and watch this again. Um, you can also slow down the video if you use your YouTube settings, the little cog icon in the bottom right hand corner, you can slow down the video if you like. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because we're done with that. And then I'm gonna show you how you can use these individual stamps. Maybe you decide, and actually I can, this is one of the ping images, this is not a PDF. Um, maybe you decide that you don't want to use the six by nine layout for your watercolor swatching. 
maybe you want to do 8 by 10 or maybe you want to do kind of a long and narrow sheet instead. Maybe you want to do your watercolor paper in half lengthwise to kind of mimic the journal page versus doing the shorter side, the 6 by 9. Um, so you can pull in these individual clusters and set them up however you like. Like I said, if you wanted to do maybe kind of like the long and narrow, you can resize these to whatever size floats your boat. And you can do a long and narrow page instead of the short and wide page. Um, you could also put together your own card collage. Like you can kind of stack these in front of each other. You can flip the image. Let's flip it this way. You could flip it like this, or you could flip it like that. You could have this one in the front, or you could send that to the back. It doesn't really look right. You can resize this. And you can create your own collage with these in any configuration that you like. You could even, if you wanted to skew this, like you could distort it a little bit and just go straight up instead of constraining. Actually, it has unconstrained proportion. Like you could distort this if you wanted to make it look a little bit different. Instead of constraining the proportions, you could do that. I wouldn't necessarily do that with the ping image. You could definitely do that with the PDF image, which is the vector, and it. it's not going to distort it or make it pixelated or anything like that. But you can play around and do a lot of different things. And the reason you're able to do this, as I said, is because I'll just bring one of these in again. Um, I've set up these images to be transparent. So both the PDF images and the ping images are transparent. So you can see this is the whole box. If these were a JPEG, this whole box would be white. These have a transparent background, but I've left the white or I've inserted white fill for all of these lines for the whole design so that you can layer them and so that you can put them on top of a digital paper and still be able to color in these white areas. If the white fill wasn't there, it would be more like this where you would see the brown paper right through all of these stamped areas. So that's the advantage of having PDFs and pings is that transparent background. Okay, so you can see you can put together your own collage. Um, again, we could make this 5.5. And then if we double click on this, we can make it four and a quarter. Okay, so here would be our card. You could have this guy here, that guy there. You can have things off the paper and then just trim that off if you wanted. All right, so you can just trim this off with your paper trimmer. So you can do all sorts of different configurations, not only for your cards, but also for your watercolor swatch journal pages as well, okay? So just maximum flexibility in terms of being able to use these in, in those different ways. So I'm going to close this. The next thing I want to look at is the already preset journal pages. Now this is a PDF file that I just opened the file directly. It's going to open it in Adobe Acrobat. Most computers at least have the viewer for that. And you can print this straight from here. So what you can do is you can take a piece of 9 by 12 watercolor paper, which is a pretty standard block size of watercolor paper, and then you can cut it in half so that it's six by nine inches. I'm gonna hit Control P, which is print. And so this print dialog box looks a little bit different than it did in pages. You can see that my page is already set to nine by six inches. If it wasn't though, for some reason, we would be able to change that here. So maybe, Maybe when you put yours in, it's actually set to eight and a half by 11 inches. 
what you would do is just go to page setup and for my printer I can just manage the custom sizes like these are all sizes that I printed to as a custom size so this was one that I did custom I'll go ahead and delete that and I'll create a new one so we'll say this is nine by six now I don't want to have any areas that aren't printable. Um, if you know what your printers are, then you can certainly enter those in here. But I'm gonna say zero for everything. And this is my untitled one that I'm just making here. I'll click okay. We can say it says untitled nine by six. We're gonna print it at 100% and hit okay. And you can see how that changes. So I can print directly from the PDF. I don't need to change anything or arrange anything. It's all set to go. Um, I'm not going to print it because I already have. Now one thing to note about printers is, I think I mentioned this already, my printer is going to leave a little bit more space on the right hand side than it does on the left. I don't know why that is you guys. It must be I assume it has something to do with the feed and how it has to feed the paper through, like that it can't go further on the right. I don't I don't really know. But for whatever reason, it mine when this prints will have a little bit more space on the right than the left. If that's not something that you wanted, instead of printing straight from the PDF, you could pull this into a pages document and actually move this image a little over to the left and print it that way. It's going to be different for everyone's printer. So we have this one. And then I, as I said, you also have this six by nine image where you can create your own swatch cells. Um, so yeah, so lots of different choices. As I said, this is the first digital stamp set I've ever made. I thought that you guys might need some sort of tutorial to go along with how do I get my images onto the page. I did make another video, gosh, it might be a year ago now, on how to set up your images in Photoshop. So if you use Photoshop Elements or Photoshop, um, I'll link that up in the right-hand corner. And yeah, I hope that you guys check out this digital stamp set and I hope you found this helpful, even if you're not using this set. And I'd love it if you stopped by my website to check out my new stamp line. Thanks so much, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.